Earlier this week, we took a tour of the USS Toledo and found out what it's like to be a submariner. Fox 61's John Charlton spent the night on board with the crew, living in the tightest and tiniest quarters. Tonight, he shows us what it's like for the man who has to cook in those tight spots. Every cook in the Navy experiences it, especially when their ship sets sail for months at a time. But as you can imagine, it's much harder on board a submarine. Fox 61's John Charlton savored the seafood on board the USS Toledo and has more now on that experience. John? Well, Erica, on a submarine, a cook is the griller, the fryer, the baker, the pastry chef. His job requires him to do everything. It's why submarine cooks consider themselves a step above other ships' cooks the elite in the U.S. Navy. Right. Continual motion aboard the USS Toledo. <laughs> and that doesn't just mean the crew. It's like a big tin can out here. In rough seas, it gets pretty bad sometimes. Thank goodness for motion sickness pills. I have some in my pocket, actually. I carry that around all the time. It's a... Uh, yeah, travel sickness pills. Is that for you? No, it's for everybody. At queasy times, which is a lot of times, you'd think food is the last thing a sailor wants. Reality is, submariners Don't let chow line. hate to miss a meal. They call me uh, cookie, they call me chef, they call me, you know, they call me when, when, when it's dinner time. It's Chief Christopher Gardner's kitchen. I actually learned this technique in Hawaii aboard the USS Toledo. We make everything edible real quick. Where every appliance is a space saver. Underneath the grill tops and oven, we're actually cooking our prime rib for dinner in there right now. It's about a 30 quart deep fat fryer. We make French fries, fried chicken. There's an oven in here. Five quart steam jacketed kettles. We can cook anything from stews to soups, gravies, sauces. We've got a 30 quart mixing bowl. This kitchen or galley about the size of a walk-in closet pumps out meals for a sub crew of up to 150 men. We're going to be making some hot rolls. Every six hours. Dude, that was awesome. Culinary specialist John Jackson. Uh, I work for the Secretary of the Navy, executive dining facility at the Pentagon. Has the resume to be Chief Gardner's sous chef. Difference, well, work a whole lot more hours here and actually had space, space to work there. <laughs> Another challenge is just having enough space. Now here's where we keep most of the dry goods. To store enough food for up to seven months at sea. This is where we can keep a lot of the uh, canned items. This is where we can actually keep almost 100 days of frozen food inside of this freezer. For deployment, you'll have about 1,000 pounds of chicken in there. <laughs> where we keep our eggs, our milk, and our fresh fruits and vegetables. Then there's the Toledo's ladder. lower level. I mean, we'll actually cover the whole deck in cans, so like people will be walking around. We were, uh, we were like, going to be taller than usual. A nuclear-powered sub could stay submerged for years and years, but it is food supply, which really dictates deployment time. Uh, right now I'm preparing the, uh, the soup for tonight. Good food is the best for morale. Giving the guys on the boat a reason to smile every day. You know, they, they could be having a really bad day, and they could come get a really good meal, and that at least does something for them. Tight quarters, limited ingredients, and hungry sailors. Could this be the real Hell's Kitchen? Get out! Get out! Chief Gardner wants to give the show a shot. Chef Ramsey never got a reply, nothing. I just want to go eat some food! That's a real jerk, isn't he? I love that guy. <laughs> He's one of my heroes. I kept writing and writing and writing. I never got any replies. No? You no, know, never did. Wake up or piss off! This is where it's at. This is a challenge. I want to see you do it. A real <laughs> challenge? Yeah. Oh, right. Very cool, John. So tell us what you ate on board the USS Toledo. Well, we had four squares actually available to us. We actually slept through breakfast. You slept through breakfast? Yeah, it was a little they early. Let you sleep through Yeah, <laughs> 5 o'clock in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. That was a little too early for us, especially since we were working until 1130 the night before. But anyway, um, for dinner, we had prime rib. Nice. So, Tasty? Oh, yeah. It was very good. I mean, everything they made on board was fantastic. Chicken parmesan. They had wow. all this fruit, all kinds of stuff. Of course, when the ship sets sail, they can bring the fruit on board, but after a, a couple of weeks, that fruit goes bad, so obviously they can't, they can't have fruit throughout the whole deployment. That's why they switch to cans later on. Uh -huh. So 
I guess the quality of the food goes so a little bit down. So the picking is good in the beginning of the uh, four month trip. Exactly, then, uh, not exactly. So, not so good towards no, the end. No. All right. Thanks, John. Oh, thank you, Eric. Appreciate it. Very cool assignment.